I think for me, there's two strengths that really stick out, especially when you're just talking about the first round high school. This is, this is maybe the best high school pitching class ever. And I think a lot of people would agree with that. It is unbelievably deep. We, we might see, we might see 15 call it or 15 high school pitchers taken in the first two rounds. It's, it's, it's really, really deep. And I would actually be surprised if Seattle doesn't get their hands on one of them just with, with the direction that they went last year with Morales and kind of this new bucket approach. I think that they're probably going to, you know, grab a high school arm with their second or third pick. If they don't go uh, with a high school arm with their first pick. I think the other one that stands out a little bit is, is I think it's a pretty good year for college outfielders, uh, just college bats in general. Um, you look at, uh, you look at Gavin Cross at Virginia tech, Jordan Beck at Tennessee, Chase Lauder at James Madison, Dylan Beavers at Cal, and then a little bit of a different type of a player, but Drew Gilbert at Tennessee is kind of a spark plug, like a Jaron Duran type of a player at the top of the draft. Um, I think those five or six guys fit pretty nicely on day one. And, you know, they're a good mix of size and speed and power and the ability to stay up the middle of the field for some of them. So uh, those would be the two demographics that I'd point out. I don't think Seattle's going to go the college outfield route. It's not really their MO, and it doesn't really seem like an organizational need right now. At least early. At least think, early. Like- after you get to the third, fourth round, it kind of sure. I mean, you point. always need yeah. kind of um, lottery tickets, if you will. But I would keep your eye on high school pitchers. Seattle has the means to take a risk this season, especially with that comp B pick, and they're in no hurry to, you know, rush a a college player to the big leagues right now. Mm. Yeah, there's too much talent already close enough uh, with Stout and Kirby and and uh, even Taylor Dollard and and some other guys. Uh, it, it's interesting you mentioned that that's a really deep uh, prep pitching class because uh, the first guy on your top 400, and I know this isn't necessarily your personal top 400, but um, obviously Dylan Lesko belongs in that range of 10, whether you have him 8 or 14, doesn't really matter, that that's the first prep pitcher on your list is at 10 here. And after that, though, it is kind of dominated. You know, there's, there's one at 11. Um, and, and you just move down and there's tons of them. Uh, you get to Ferris at IMG and, and I it's just think it's really interesting that that might be one of the big strengths in this draft, but there might not be one going in the top 10. That sounds to me like that means the value for Seattle at 21 might legitimately be a prep guy falling there that probably belongs in the top 15 based on talent. And you just need to find the right teams willing to, to to go that route like they did with Harry Ford last year. There weren't a lot of teams that had Harry Ford that high last year. What, one or two maybe? I mean, a small handful at most. And nobody even ripped <laughs> Seattle. Nobody, you know, uh, credible ripped Seattle for doing that. It was just, hey, we're ready to do this. We're ready to take this on. The upside is here. Same thing could happen with the pitching, even all the way down at 21. Hey, it's Jason Churchill. To get the full episode, as well as every other episode of the podcast, Past and Future, subscribe for as little as $5 per month by going to bit.ly slash get the pod. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash get the pod, all one word, a link you can also find on my Twitter profile. Hey, thanks for checking out Baseball Things. Baseball Things.